Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this beauty. This is a organic pleated mask with a nose bridge panel, no nose wire. This is just a little bit different style and I'm really excited to share this pattern with you. I'm also going to show you how to hack those pleats in 30 seconds with my 30 second trick. We have no elastic in an organic product that we're using for the ear loops and an lanyard that we're adding to the back of it. So this mask is great if you have any skin sensitivities. It's safe for you and for the planet and I'm so excited to share this with you today. So let's get to it. Let's get right to the sewing table and sew it together. Hello, my name is Dawn Takis and I am the Streamline Seamstress. I welcome you if you're new. Thank you for stopping by. I was a pattern maker, a seamstress, a designer. I owned a sewing factory for many moons, <laughs> many years, and we manufactured and shipped swimwear and activewear worldwide. All the tips and tricks that I learned in the factory, I share with you on this channel so that you can streamline your sewing, save money, save time, save energy. And if you're down for that, make sure to subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell. It doesn't cost you anything, but hopefully the content and the value is here and rewarding for you. So without Without further ado, I want to get right into making our organic pleated mask today. I'm so excited to share this with you because this is a wise choice for you and a safe choice for our planet. So from today, I have already cut everything and I just wanted to go over really quick the template. You want to make sure that you're cutting with the cross grain and the cross grain usually has a little bit of stretch. The grain line is usually something that you want to go the length of your body and cross grain you usually want it to go across and since this is going across our face we want to make sure to cut it with the cross grain. That being said I'm making two variations of the same pattern for you today and here's an example. This is the pleated surgical mask, the organic one that I'm going to make for you over here and then over here we've added the nose bridge panel and just to demo that for you really quick it's got the nose bridge panel instead of the nose wire bridge that's in this one. So that being said, we're going to make both of these. I decided to put a quilter's cotton on top of the organic hemp cotton blend just so that you could define which one I was working on, on while I'm sewing. And we have the hemp jersey knit ties for our ear loops here. And this is a pattern piece here for your sides for your mask and also to cut on the fold for the nose bridge for this particular one. I just went ahead and cut a two inch strip and I'm gonna take this to the table and show you how to make hem tape with a bias tape maker. And that's our last prepping that we need to do before we can start sewing. So this is a gorgeous, and when I say gorgeous, I mean gorgeous. This is a gorgeous A20 organic cotton hemp blend that I received from one of the suppliers that I purchased from. And I get these books with swatches, very affordable. I'm gonna put the link below for you on that as well. This is hemp. Everything here is a hemp or a hemp cotton blend. And they also have another book that is of the jersey. So this is all the jersey, terry cloth, various jerseys. I think it's $25 for both books. I'm going to put that link below for you, but I found it very helpful to find different weights and bodies of fabrics that I wanted to work with. So again, I am looking for my cross grain because I want to go across the body with my pattern on the width. So I want to check and see. And here it's a little more difficult because I can't see my salvage edge. And, um, I have cut, I've surged the edge of this before I washed it, but then I cut a clean straight edge to work with as well. So it's a little bit harder, but I can see that there's a little bit of stretch going this way, and there's absolutely none going this way. Another thing I love about this particular fabric is it's 120 inches wide. So that in itself makes it such a great value because you're gonna get so much out of this fabric. And you can see it just goes on for days on the width. And so this is perfect if you wanted to make some sheets or pillowcases or anything that's oversized, but it makes a beautiful mask. And that's what I'm gonna work on making today. So this is the width of the fabric. This is the length of the fabric. The length has no stretch. 
but the width has a little bit of stretch and that's my cross grain. That is where I want to lay my pattern to cut. So everything about this pattern is cut on the cross grain because we want that stretch except for the nose bridge panel and we're cutting that on the bias or on the diagonal. And the way to find that is to lay your fabric on the mat and you want to make sure that all of your straight edges are lining up accordingly and I'm going to just put a weight on there to keep it secure and then I am going to just fold to create this diagonal and if I want I can use tool or my finger to finger press that and that's going to be my fold for cutting this panel but it's going to put me in position to be able to cut this on the diagonal because we're, the grain line is going this way, the cross grain is going this way, and the diagonal in the middle is the bias. And so we want to cut one on the bias on the fold, and that's why I'm folding it in half. I have a rotary wheel and mat and ruler, and this is the organic hemp jersey, and the greater stretch is going this direction, and the shorter stretch is going this direction. We always want to cut our ties, and that's what I'm going to cut for you right now, going with the greater stretch. And that is likely to be from selvage to selvage. You can see most jerseys or knits, they roll on the selvaged edge, and you can clearly see where the weave, the looping ends on that. And I am just going to cut a nice clean edge to start so that I have a smooth cut. And then I'm going to line it up on the mat, and I'm going to cut about five-eighths of an inch, half-inch. Depends on the body of the fabric. This fabric's a little thicker, and so I'm going to cut it a little bit more narrow. And I'm using the ruler. I'm right-handed, and I'm pushing down to keep everything in place and cutting those strings. Cut two pieces. The from salvage to salvage, which I believe the fabric is 60 inches wide. And now all I have to do is just pull. And when I pull, it makes this gorgeous elastic string just naturally. When it's cut in the proper direction with the greater stretch, any jersey, spandex, lycra knit will do this. It will curl and it will stay curled. And if it becomes uncurled, you can just tug on it and it will curl right back up and it makes this beautiful, gorgeous string. And this is what we're going to use for the ear loops and for the neck lanyard. And if you're doing any kind of uh, masks and you're doing the loops behind the head, or a one strap connection behind the head, this works as well. So I'm gonna set that aside. And so I have my strip that I cut at the sewing table. I did cut it on the diagonal and I'm gonna put it through my favorite tool. This is a bias tape maker and I've had this in my sewing room for so many years I can't even remember how long. <laughs> but the idea of the bias tape maker is to just feed it into the bigger end and pull it out the smaller end. I'm going to turn this around so I can show you. I'm using my pointer. You can use a seam ripper, a pin, pretty much find any tool in your sewing room to help you through this. But what that does is it creates, starts to create a fold on either side and that fold is about three-eighths of an inch and it makes a one-inch tape. And I cut it on the diagonal because it's easier to get through the bias tape maker to begin the process if it's cut on the diagonal. And I'm just going to take my iron, and this is the hemp cotton blend, so it can handle the heat. I'm going to try and use very little steam because I don't want to fog up my camera lens for you. And it's as simple as that. Now this is the pattern template for this. I only need about this much on either side, the right and the left. But it's just so much easier to make this tape all in one strip rather than making two pieces. And when I go to fold this, I can fold this manually and eyeball this. And I want it to be just a little bit more shallow on the upper side as opposed to the lower side. So when I sew, I'm going to be catching that bottom easily. If I make it exactly the same, 
if the fabric moves on you when you're sewing, it could cause you some problems. So you can do that manually, and I have always done it manually like this. I'm just in the middle, thumb on this side, my middle finger here, and I'm just giving it a little pull, and I'm eyeballing it as I go. If you're not confident with that, or you're a little bit worried about having your fingers too near the iron, which after many years of sewing, you get past that. This is half inch bias tape, so you could use a hot roller. And this is a hot roller by Clover. And the hot roller effectively will do the same thing for you. And it has the measurements on there. And all you have to do is fold to the measurements and press. So it's just a matter of whichever suits you better. To make that hem tape and voila there you go in the hot rollers case whenever I put that in it made the top at a half inch which gave me a little lip underneath to sew a little variance there you can see it and then when I did it manually I could see the variance on the opposite side. So it's just whichever method you prefer. And then when we're at the sewing table, we'll cut this to size after we've pleated the mask to what our needs are. And real quick while I'm here, I'm going to give my other pattern pieces a press. And we want to press center because we're going to need to know where center is when we're sewing. And the best way to do that is with the iron doesn't leave any marks. We know where we were when we started the project, where our center was when we began. I'm just going to give it, and this middle one is a very important one, so I'm going to the horizontal press. I'm going to make sure that that's pressed nicely and then I have a cross there so I can see my center and I can see my center horizontally. And then this is the nose bridge panel that was cut on the bias and it is also sewn on the fold because the fold is the part that is actually, this is the part that's sewn in here and then this part is the part that sits on your nose so we want a nice fold there it'll be easier for you to sew and baste this if you give it a good press first so the first thing I did was to pin the center of the top of the mask where that seam is so that I can see that nice and clearly and then I'm going to take the point of the nose bridge panel and I'm going to make sure to pin that in place so that it lines up perfectly with that pin and that everything is centered. And from center, I'm going to work my way to the left and I'm going to pin. Let me bring these up here so that my hand doesn't get in your way. And about every half inch I'm going to just pin to match everything up. And again, I'm just basting this in. I'm going to make it a little bit high on the end there because I want to make sure to catch that tab in the final seam. So I'm just going to overlap that just a tad. It's a little bit longer than we need it to be, and we're going to just sew that in. And now I'm working this direction. And about every thumb, every 7 eighths of an inch, half inch, I'm going to put a pin. And same thing. I'm going to fold everything flat. Now it does have a little bit of stretch to it because of the cross grain. So you got to be mindful of that, not to pull it too taut or too tight and throw off the balance of everything. But you should have about the same amount of fabric on either side. And a good indication of that is to fold the panel in half. You have your center marking pin. Is everything matching up on the sides? Is everything matching up on the ends? Everything looks good. And so now what I'm gonna do is a base stitch just to base that in place. I wanna show you a little hack here if you have any trouble threading your needle. And this is a Microtex needle that I'm using, which is great for 
working with woven fabrics. It has uh, the ability to give you precision seams. I'm going to use this little piece of cardboard from the back of, uh, I believe it's, yeah, my needles. And that makes it easier for me to thread if I'm having any trouble. Sometimes when you're going to thread, you're getting a reflection from the metal pieces behind. And especially as we age, that becomes more of an issue. So if you're having that trouble, try that hack. You can also take it like a sticker or a label and stick it to the back. But I find just putting in anything with some writing on it just to block that metal seems to work really well for me. And so the fabric that I am working with today is a 80-20 organic cotton, organic hemp sheeting. It's 120 inches wide. I believe it's 5.3 ounces. It's an absolutely gorgeous fabric. It makes a beautiful mask. And as I said in a previous video where I talked about making masks that were safe for you and for the planet, it um, doesn't give me any problems for allergies or any allergic reaction, which a lot of textiles do. Once I washed this fabric, even before I washed it actually, I noticed that it was just such a gorgeous fabric and I could tell the organic nature. As you can see, I just pivoted there and I am just basing this in, which is what I'm going to recommend for our beginners out there. I'm going to pivot exactly where the pins are and then just pick up. And this is a quarter inch baste and all I'm trying to do is just, I want to remove those pins out of place and I just want to make sure that that nose bridge panel is sewn in well. So I have basted that in. I'm looking on the sides. I've got about the same amount of fabric left over once it's sewn in and I can give that just a quick check and say yeah everything is matching up nicely. The point is there. So now it's time for me to pin in the inside or the outside of the fabric. However, they're both the same at this point, so it's not going to matter as much. I'm going to take that second layer, the inside or outside of the fabric, and I want to make sure that the nose panel is in between the two. And the first thing I'm going to do is pin. And it might be a little bit easier from here. I'm going to pin center because I have that marked right with that crease that I did and I can see the point and I'm going to pin center and I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier and I'm going to just work in one direction and then I'm going to pin in the other direction to close and I can see that's matching up nicely for me which is exactly what I want. I'm going to put a pin in here maybe one another inch and a half away and an inch and a half away here and then I'm going to start center and work my way this way. Now keep in mind we have that little tail that I deliberately left out and that's okay. It's sewn in so it's not anything that is going to cause any problems for you. I just want to make sure when we sew this 3 eighths of an inch hem which is going to enclose the basting stitch that we have closed that tip in and that we're not missing that tip when we go to sew it in. And this is the same mask that we just made the hybrid version of that had the print on the outside. The only difference is that we're adding that nose bridge panel instead of using a removable nose wire. All right, so I am sewing at 3 eighths of an inch. I'm gonna back tack and I'm not gonna let those pins bother me whatsoever because when they go this way, like railroad tracks, and the sewing machine is the train, they're good. They'll go right over them. Very rarely do I have any trouble with that. So I'm gonna sew right to this pin at my 3 eighths of an inch. I'm gonna use my pointer to make sure, and just very slowly, and when I go to turn, I'm going to do one more stitch and when I go to turn what I want to do is I want to pull the fabric this way, this direction to smooth everything out there 
using my pointer so that everything is nice and smooth underneath there. And I'm still catching my 3 eighths of an inch. If you do not have 3 eighths of an inch and you're too shallow or too much, then your pivot's not right. You want to make sure that you're following whatever the seam allowance is when you're doing this. Um, if you're doing it for something else, that you're pivoting a sharp corner like that. And in this case, the seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch. So when I get to the end here, I'm going to make sure to back tack that I have a nice strong seam that's not going to come undone. I'm going to remove the pins and then we're going to pink this. The first thing I'm going to do now that I've trimmed my threads is right where that tip is. I'm just going to give it a clip because it's going to make it so much easier for me to take my pinking shears and just give, use them to trim the excess bulk. Beautiful. And now because I did that trim, I can just continue on. It's a little bit thick here because we have four layers of fabric. So I'm just taking my time. And normally I might do this flat on the cutting table. But to save some time and not have to move the camera, I did it this way. And if I turn this right side out, you can see our nose bridge turned out beautiful. And I, if I want, I can sew a top stitch over that, which I think I'm going to do just to secure that in place. But you do not have to. And I'm going to give it a nice press. I have the needle down, and I'm just going to do an eighth of an inch top stitch across the top before I sew the bottom, just to give myself some leverage. And I'm just finger pressing this as I go. And I'm using my foot. There's a little slot there for my threads to go in. It's a little bulky in here or thick. I'm just going to use my pointer to smooth things out. And we're going to have to do a slight pivot here as well, just like we did earlier. And again, smoothing everything out. So, voila. Not feeling that I need to pin anything. I'm just going to sew it 3 eighths of an inch. Use the pinking shears, pink that across, press, and then top stitch also at one eighth of an inch. I can finger press that as I sew it. I want to, which I think I'm going to do. And this is just a reinforcement stitch. It's not something that needs to be perfect. And again, I'm going to use my bamboo pointer to help me through this process. We're going to, we, we still can see that seam from earlier or that pressed fold from earlier. And now I'm going to take the bottom of the mask to that pressed fold. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. It's going to be a little more tricky because of the nose bridge panel and I'm going to do one side at a time. And 
same thing over here. I'm going to take it to that center press. And that's going to give you your three accordions that you need to do your pleats. I'm going to do that center one one more time so that we can see it. And you should have your three accordions there. And this method works well regardless of the size of the mask that you're making, whether it's a plus size adult, teen, or child. Any pleated mask, this system works very well. I'm going to take the bottom fold and I am going to fold it halfway to the bottom bottom of the mask and pin. And the same thing with the center fold. I can see that fold that I pressed and I'm going to take it halfway so that it's not overlapping that previous fold, but it's right next to it. And then this third fold, I'm going to repeat and take that crease and I'm going to take it halfway and so that I have three gorgeous pleats right in a row. And you can see in the camera, they're not overlapping each other. We have them right next to each other, but we do not have them overlapping each other. They are independent of each other. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, making sure that the pleats are going in the same direction. And this time I'm gonna start on the top fold and I'm just going to go to what halfway is. I'm just going to take it to halfway. That should be about the proper location. And from the crease, and then I'm going to go halfway to the next crease and make a fold. I'm going to pin to hold. And I'm a huge fan of pins. I know that there's many out there that favor those clips, but the clips are bulky, they get in the way, pins are cleaner, and wovens are made to retain their shape after being pinned. I'm going to repeat that again. Wovens are made to retain their shape after being pinned, and all that nonsense about pinning a fabric uh, with a mask is just silliness. So that being said, on a woven. When you're working with a polypropylene, that's different. But here we go, shaping up like a gorgeous mask, right? And I folded it on the side so that I can see if everything is lining up and matching up equally. Now, what I'm gonna do is just baste both sides very quickly, sewing this way, sewing this way, just a quick base so that I can remove those pins and then sew in the casing in the ear loop ties. Just make sure that your pleats are going from nose to chin on both sides and I'm just going to give this a quick little back tack and I'm just going to secure that down and it would be natural to go this way right but it might give me a little little challenge with those pleats. You always want to be sewing in the direction that the pleats are folded in lay. So I'm going to bring the mask into the inside of the sewing machine. And that probably gave many new sewers many headaches because it would just be, you know, it's a little awkward to bring it to the inside of the machine. And so I'm sure many of you out there probably struggled with that. I have a video on how to do these pleats that kind of set this whole journey in place and I just wanted to do another video just to make it more clear so that you could see. Now I'm ready to ditch sew the casing in and I want to make sure that I have the smaller side. Remember when we made our hem tape we we created a little lip there so that it's a little bit smaller on one side. So this is the smaller side and in this case we have the same fabric on both sides so it really doesn't matter. But I am going to line this up with the edge of the mask 
and I'm going to leave an equal amount of extra on both sides and I am just going to sew in the ditch. And the ditch is that pressed, that per first press seam or right next to it at 3 eighths of an inch. Now the mask is going to curve a little bit because of the pleats so we're just going to go with the curve and just move into the curve as we're sewing it. But I'm going to start right here. That is the beginning of the mask. I'm going to open this up and pin it so that you can see it while I'm sewing. So I am just going to put that presser foot down right at the beginning of that mask. I'm going to put my needle down and I'm going to just sew as close to this crease in the ditch as I can. Right sides are together at 3 eighths of an inch or close to that ditch. And I pin the fabric down so hopefully that makes it easy for you to be able to see what I'm doing. And you can see I'm moving this because the once we pleat the mask it has a natural curve to it. And that curve is good because it makes things fit beautifully. We just want to make sure that we're hanging with that curve and not sewing a straight line. It's going to curve just slightly. Same thing on this side. I'm going to go as close to that seam as possible, a little back tack to secure it. And I have this pinned down. It's parallel with the fabric. Sew as close to that ditch as I possibly can. And I do have the mask pinned open a little bit that you can see what I'm doing. And then my fat hands are not in the way. When I unpin this, you'll see there's the mask, there's the seam. We've got that extra fabric that we do not need. It's going to be a little thick because of the pinking shears, right? So I am just going to get in tight into the center of the pinking shears. And what will happen now is when I go to sew in the ties, I'm going to be able to just have a nice fold. Everything's going to fit in there beautifully. I'm going to pin this and show it for, to you and then sew and then we're almost done. Yay! I have trimmed that excess bulk. We've ditch sewn one side of the tape. So the first thing I'm going to do is open that tape on one side and fold it down. And I'm going to lay my jersey tie in there that's 10 inches long for adults, 8 inches long for children. And I am going to just fold that in, tuck it in, and I am going to use a pin to keep that baby in place. And I can grab the jersey tie with it if I want, that's better yet. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to fold down near the mask, but open it up, and then just continue to fold and fold the jersey tie in. And because we trimmed all that excess bulk, that jersey tie should fit in there perfectly. You shouldn't have any problems with sewing it in. But just to be certain, you might want to add a pin in the center so that when you go to sew your 3 8 of an inch across, you're not catching the jersey tie and I have the other side pinned and I'm going to sew this real quick. So I'm going to come in and I am going to start, instead of starting on the edge, I'm going to start just a couple stitches in and then do my couple stitches forward. I'm going to remove this pin so it's not problematic for me and now I'm going to back tack and now continue forward. And sometimes, depending on the thickness of your fabric, and keep in mind that this is double fold, double fold, and then we have those pleats, so it's really thick. Sometimes it's easier to come in, do a few stitches, and then back tack than it is to start at the beginning. The feed dogs just seem to work a little bit better that way and cut everything on the opposite side is good 
and now we will do this side and I'm going to do the same thing and hopefully get my hands out of the way for you but right about where that pin is pinned in is where I'm going to say I'd like to start I'm going to remove that pin just so that it doesn't become problematic for me again really thick I'm using my pointer to get in close so that I can cover that basting seam, making sure that using my 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I know I shouldn't talk when the machine's running, but this is different. And I've got a pin here. I'm going to use my pointer in place of the pin. So this next part of connecting the ties together, I'm going to show you on a piece of cotton because it's so much easier, and then we'll do it on the jersey ties. But I know that the camera can see this, so I'm going to do it this way. You're going to take both of the good sides of the fabric, and obviously you can see here with the pink hearts, and I'm going to crisscross that strip. And this works with any type of strip that you have. And today, with the ties, it's a jersey. And I'm just going to put a little pin in there to hold. You could actually do maybe a pin here and a pin here. And what we want to do is create that crisscross effect. And then we're going to sew a diagonal line straight across from this point all the way over to this point. So from here, to here and what that's do it's going to create a straight line without the excess bulk if we would sew it and I'm just going to show this to you really quick if we would choose to sew it like this it's all that fabric from the seam allowance is creating extra bulk but when we do it this way we remove that factor and so I'm going to show you that really quick Get the glasses on so that we can see and you can use a piece of uh, Taylor's chalk and a ruler if you want to get yourself a straight line use a pen a sewing pen to mark that if you want I eyeball it and of course a back tack to knot it and secure it and when I take those pins out now I'm gonna trim and normally I would probably use pinking shears to trim this because it's a woven. But when I trim those tails, I'm going to trim just a little closer. When I trim that off and I open that up, you can see that just makes a beautiful, straight piece of strip of fabric without creating any excess bulk. And we're going to do this with the jersey ties, the exact same thing. And the jersey ties, it was so small in the camera, I was concerned that maybe you would not be able to see that clearly. But I'm going to do the exact same thing. We are going to just sew that diagonal straight across, fabrics right side together, crisscrossed. I'm going to do a little back tack here, and straight across, back tack. I'm going to pull away and I'm going to do the other one. This is another scenario where your pointer is going to come in really handy because that jersey has a tendency to curl a little bit. And you can sew this, you can leave your jersey uncurled if you think it might be easier for you and um, it's just going to make you uh, you might want to cut your jersey ties a little bit smaller than 10 inches because they're going to grow when you stretch them so I would probably cut them maybe eight I'm going to say there's probably a 20 percent increase in the length when you stretch it And I'm just going to cut off those tails just like we did 
with the pink, except for it's really super tiny. Think doll clothes, right? And if you're new to sewing, doll clothes is a great way to learn how to sew because the smaller the garment, the harder it is to sew and the faster it will improve your skills. And now I'm just going to take that and I want to pull it and I'm just going to get everything to turn in for me into that nice cord that we're making. And I'm going to do a few stitches just to hold it in place. This is going to be on the inside of the casing for the ear loops. And so it doesn't have to look pretty, but I'm a neat person when I sew. I want everything to look nice and neat. I could just stop right there if I wanted to. It would probably be fine, but I'm not. I don't want those tails popping out, so I'm going to use my pin, I can use my turner, I'm going to tuck those tails in, and I'm just going to give it a few stitches straight down. You could use a zigzag, you could use a straight stitch, I'm going to use a straight stitch, and I'm just going to back tack that and just secure it down. And I'm putting my hand on the other side, on the other one, so that you can definitely see it in the camera. Again, I apologize. Sometimes it's hard to be the camera person and the sewing person. And I'm going to back tack that. And all I want to do is just make sure that's sewn in. I'm going to trim this. I'll be right. So I have my go-to tool, my Dritz Loop Turner, which is my favorite tool must have in my sewing room and I have chosen to use wooden pony beads these are nine millimeter I purchased them on Amazon and I'm gonna put the link below for you but so that this face mask is 100% organic everything is biodegradable about this mask we have the 80-20 hemp blend we did the ties out of the Jersey hemp cotton knit and wooden pony beads makes it 100% biodegradable and so when you throw it away we do not have to worry about it being biodegradable it automatically is and there's no components of this mask that uh, are going to take forever to break down so I'm going to take those ties that I've sewn on the diagonal and secured and I'm going to put them on the inside of the mask casing it's the first thing I'm going to do and these ear loops are deliberately a little bit big. I want that. And now to finish the mask, all I need to do is use my loop turner from Dritz. I've got my pony beads on there. Sometimes the pony beads, you need to clean out like some, if there's any little wood, if there's any wood components there, you might need to like just kind of clean it out a little bit with something so that you can easily get through it. Just a note. And so I am going to just hook my ear loop jersey tie very carefully. I'm just gonna gently hook it. I'm gonna be able, I can close this little flippy thing and then just pull that through just barely and then I'll be able to pull the jersey through and if it opens up like that that's fine because we can fix that it's not a big deal and I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side I'm going to just open up that little flippy part of the Dritz Turner I'm going to hook my fabric very gently not roughly and then I'm going to easily just pull that pony bead right on there and it makes it adjustable. And normally what I do to size it is I take my pointer or something that's the same size and adjust those pony beads and just pull that string because when you pull it, it'll open sometimes, but when you pull it, it goes right back into that beautiful elastic string and there is our 
100% biodegradable face mask and I'm going to show you what this looks like on so that you can see. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today to make this beautiful organic pleated face mask and that you picked up some hacks that are going to help you, especially with those pleats, right? I hope that worked out for you and you learned something. If you did, make sure to leave a comment below. I'd like to know that I'm on track and that I'm helping you. And additionally, if you have any questions, make sure to leave that in the comments for me also. I promise I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much community of the world of sewing angels out there. You have given me a sense of purpose over this last year and it kept me from being lonely knowing that you're out there and communicating and that we're all in this together. Thank you so much. God bless. Be well. Keep sewing. It's good for the soul.